it, maybe it's overly stereotyped in this way that is the most kind of traditional orchestra that it holds on to its tradition. But in an international world where so many orchestras just sound like another major international orchestra, that's certainly been a criticism of what's been happening in Berlin is they're losing some yeah. of the tradition and it's become more international. Do you think? How does that apply to specific repertoire? Like when Vienna Philharmonic plays Mahler versus something an, another composer, are you thinking like, well, this is our Mahler tradition, or are you thinking more in a broader sense of, well, this is how we play, and we put it in context of the style of that composer, but it's still the way that we play? I think one can sort of base it down to something quite simple, and that is the principle of subdivision has not yet reached Vienna. A sixteenth is still a matter for interpretation. It's not an exact thing. It's like in most orchestras in the world, that's a bottle that had water in it, there it is, and this is a sixteenth. Yep, da, 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 da. There's a series one, so da, 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 da. you'll get that. Yep. And that is, of course, exact. And without that, you can't play Schoenberg. Without that, you can't play Stravinsky. Without that, you can't play a lot of composers. But if you become too obsessed with subdivision, which I'm coming from both sides of the fence now, you know, you lose the musicality when you play a Mozart symphony, when you play a Schubert symphony, because you can't exactly define a 16th as being a mathematic right. entity. And one 16th in one bar could be completely different than the next. Um, and that is the fundamental basis of the Vina Mission. Nothing is written down, nothing's laid down. One of the hardest things that I ever did was play my first Viennese concert, my first New Year's Day concert. Oh, I'm sure. I, I was a very experienced player when I came here, but what I saw on the page was not what I was hearing. It was the nearest thing to, to jazz within classical music. The rhythms were different, and it went, you know, on how they felt the music. Um, and beyond so, just beyond just the waltz rhythm that we always think of, that we always yeah. associate oh, with. Oh sure, within phrases, it? yeah. Within a row of straight quarters, the rhythm would change ever so slightly, with a sl certain feel to it. Um, so you asked about this tradition. The tradition is here, I think, that the sentiment of the music comes before and sometimes to the exclusion of everything else. Mm. And that, you know, a lot of the criticisms that have been leveled against this orchestra over the years have been to do with inter intonation and, and rhythm, you know? I hear a lot of people saying, oh, you hear this, this inaccuracy, there's inaccuracies in the rhythm here or intonation problems here. Yeah, and it, it's true, but I don't hear people listening to other, let's say, more, more sterile orchestras and saying, did you hear that? It's not very musical. And that's what I find myself doing now. You know, I find myself listening and well, what was that all about? Why did you do that? What were you trying to say? You know? Yeah. Um, the, Vien the Viennese tr tradition, as far as I can see, is one of a certain musical philosophy as to how they approach everything. Um, and it frustrates me sometimes when we play modern music, i.e., 20th century stuff sometimes. <laughs> where it has to be vertical, where it has to line up, and it simply doesn't line up because people are not self-divided. But then I, I feel all the more forgiving when I hear a Bruckner symphony or a Mahler symphony, which to be frank, no orchestra in the world can even come close to. You know, um, and again, I'm in many ways an outsider. I, my orchestra was always the London Symphony. Mm -hmm. but when the Vienna Philharmonic play Bruckner, and I don't know why any other orchestra ever bothers to play Mahler or Bruckner, to be honest, sometimes. You well, know, that, uh, that's yeah. very, you know, okay, I'm being rather extreme. But there, Bruckner but I can buy. I can, I can hear Mahler played by other folks that still has something that seems like it's coming from the score, like it's a very organic, oh, natural. Yeah, yeah, sure. But Bruck, Bruckner, I've never, I've never really heard a successful interpretation by any other group yeah. to the to the level yeah. where you think now that is it. Yeah, I think just to add to what I was saying, you sounded a bit extreme. What I was saying, if you, for me, a performance of a Mahler symphony without goatskin timpani, without Vienna horns, doesn't sound like Mahler. Yeah. I think that is just so integral to the sound of the music now, certainly in my ears, that I, if I hear, you know, modern timpani and modern horns, I, you know, it sounds, the horns just simply sound too big, you know? 
and he the doesn't question sound of like non rotary is like yeah, he doesn't months. sound like he's coming from a bergalm, and it's got to come from the bergalm. You know, it's got to come from the mountainside. Huh. Um, and for me, you lose the authenticity. You know, that's why. I mean, sure. I when I was in the London Symphony, and you know, we we did lots of great Mahler performances. You know, but as to whether it's Mount of Vienna or not, which is where the music comes from, or actually Czechoslovakia, the vacuum, which is exactly but near here. It's a different question. Whether it's authentic or not is a different question. You know? hmm. I mean, I don't. I, I personally do not like hearing the Vienna Philharmonic play Ravel, Debussy, Stravinsky. For the same reason, it doesn't have that smell of authenticity about it, you know? Um, and I feel that in order for the orchestra, because there are, there are modernizers within the orchestra who want to play Gershwin and Ravel and Stravinsky and other such fanciful modern things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All of a hundred you know, years ago. <laughs> that's right, yeah. You know, I would not risk it. I think the and my opinion is the Vienna Philharmonic is almost like a museum piece. They are something from yesteryear. Leave it that way, it's beautiful, you know, and I'm an outsider saying that. You know, there are so many orchestras doing <laughs> so many, there's a bag of coffee beans, right? there are so many orchestras doing so much of the same things. If we can preserve a style from yesteryear here, you know, I mean, I, I am very much aware that I have a role in the, in the Vienna Philharmonic to continue a tradition. That's my job. It doesn't matter what I want. I'm a certain jigsaw piece in a certain jigsaw puzzle. That's where I have to fit. And if I want to express myself in a different way, I should go and play solo. Yeah. yeah.